Hello, it's Richard at Richard's Guitars, and uh, this is a, qu a quick one. A um, little bit of controversy, what, well, as always, um, surrounding my um, little feature I did on this lovely. Uh, well, actually, the feature I was doing was on the V65 by Vintage, and I mentioned this at the end regarding uh, quality control, and um, well, it wasn't actually regarding quality control; it was regarding having a realistic expectation of guitars at a certain price point and a tiny minority came up with a few comments which I have to sort of juggle what do I show what do I delete what do I get involved in you know do I start scrapping with people do you annoy me um, and um, normally opt for the last one and then go yeah no I shouldn't be doing that um, so I thought right look I'll try and explain myself a little bit better um, in a video just to explain things. So, one comment came up about the neck, the neck uh, on this guitar, it was the neck joint, and I said that the customer was unhappy with the neck joint and how it fitted. I looked at the neck joint and thought it was absolutely spot on, not a problem. The customer wasn't happy with it. I maybe made a mistake. Of showing you the guitar so I'll show you again uh, so this is the neck pocket uh, the, this is the bit this is the offending area okay there there now then now then what I realized is because look you know I don't not everyone is necessarily used to seeing this but it's what it is what you're seeing there is predominantly the shadow now look at look how bad that looks when I show you what a close-up like that now then, here is my very thin <laughs> plectrum. Uh, this is, I don't know, a medium, uh, so it's like about a 0.6 of a mil. And um, yeah, 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 I want to try and show you this. <laughs> Not try to do it with the video. Here we go. Now, go on. It won't go in, okay? Oh, Richie. I'm trying to do it backwards. Hang on, let me look at it while I'm doing it. There we go. I can't get a 0.6 mil. There, just that edge there. Look at that. Now that's a 0.6 mil. That is a tiny, 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 tiny. That is really tight to the neck. But because it's a white guitar, you're seeing the shadow. Okay, you're seeing the shadow. <clears throat> This is a £1,000 unbelievable, one of my favourite guitars, it's an Ibanez, uh, actually signed by Joe Satriani on the back. Uh, it's been in my shop for months, I haven't had a chance to promote it because we've been moving shop and I'll get it all smartened up. It's absolutely top nick, it's got all the bits. Um, we'll go in my second hand collection as soon as I've got time to do it. Um, there's a story behind this guitar, but anyway, let's have a look at the neck joint. Uh -huh. Oh look, a neck join. Hang on then. Now that neck. Oh, oh hang on. It was on the other side. That looks pretty spot on. Hang on. Here we go. Oh, get the angle. Li li la la la. Right. Now then, you can't see that because it's dark. But there is a, which one is it? Oh, I was on the right side before, oh Christ. It was on this side. This side, there is a tiny gap running down here. Um, but look how smart that is, look how tidy that is. There you go, there you go, finally got it. Now that gap is no wider than the gap, sorry, no narrower than the gap on the other one. You might find that the Ibanez is a little bit slightly wider than that, but there is a gap there. It would show a lot more if the guitar was white. So that's what I want to say. I want to just try and get some perspective. And, and, and so what happens is, you get someone on the thing, oh, I would reject that, I'd give that back. That's fine, it's everyone's prerogative to, um, I just feel that it kind of, yeah, so, the, so um, another point was made. Um, if Yamaha can do it, why can't everybody do it? As if Yamaha are this kind of... Well, first of all, 
Yamaha guitars are excellent guitars. They are actually made very, very well. Again, Japanese brand, isn't it? I'm not quite sure where the, uh, I think they're still made in Indonesia though, possibly the Pacificas. Um, I'm sure they are Indonesian or Chinese these days. But I always thought Yamaha Pacificas were very, very well made. And I, and I, so there was a comment on there. I've got a Yamaha Pacifica and um, if Yamaha can do it, then Vintage should be able to do it. The big difference is I have to promote guitars that I believe are inspiring and Yamaha Pacificas are sold by shops that don't have guitar techs because they are actually really well made. They are really well made, but I don't need a guitar that is just purely great out the box, which Yamaha's hand on heart probably have the highest quality control and if Martin Adam is watching Martin used to work with me at my old business he's now the guitar uh, I think he's uh, sales director or guitar manager or something at Yamaha so hello Martin I uh, hope you're well um, and yeah Yamaha guitars really high really high quality control really high build quality on their guitars don't listen to this bit Martin um, but tonally yeah. As an electric guitar brand, they're really bland. They're bland. They're bland. That's what I'm trying to say. They're they're, they, they're they're sterile. There's nothing. There's no character to them. That's my feeling. So the point is, I have to sell guitars and I have to recommend guitars. That it's all about transparency. It's all about my my passion for what I'm doing. Yamaha have a range of about six guitars going through price points, all of which follow a, a very similar theme, the Pacifica, um, and now they've got this kind of slightly, slightly, they've tried to be a bit vintage -y type thing with another range, but they ultimately are a one trick pony, the Pacifica, and the Pacifica is a very set theme, and vintage are providing an absolute wealth of models, variety, variations that fit different people's playing styles so that someone like me can say, right, if you're after this kind of tone, and I'm gonna do a video tonight, because this is what I'm really here for tonight, and I'm gonna be doing a video. Yeah, watch this. Ooh. If it all comes off. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do a video tonight. This, <laughs> it's a Gibson. Oh, and guess what? This Gibson, this is a £3,000 Gibson guitar. And what have we got here? It's just come in, just come in literally days ago. Days ago. And look, I don't know if you can see that. But there's a nasty, no, it's not nasty. It's not, nasty. I've got to sell this guitar. It's not nasty. It's very, very much in line with what you'd expect from a Gibson. That is a, ri a ridge, okay? Where the heel is joined to the body. Now actually, if we want to get all funny about this, that is smooth, there's a ridge. That is not, that is not right, okay? That's a 3,000 pound Gibson guitar. I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's excusable, I'm not saying they should do that. I'm selling it second hand and I, <laughs> I've been playing on that, it was great fun, really nice. And I'm going to be comparing it quality wise and tonally to this. And guess what, it's a vintage. Vintage. So that's going to be, that's going to be tonight's video. The one I'm supposed to be doing now. But I was so plagued with that last video issues on my mind I just wanted to kind of give a bit content if I'm going to talk back I think I'm going to do it through a video and just say look people can always look very cynically at what I do people can always sort of and it is a minority um, but there was a minority and I could see a few people thumbing up and it was thumbing up the comment I'm like well, okay it's a bit of a backlash here um, so I just want to kind of put into context that I'm not trying to excuse quality failures um, and it really is our responsibility to hand finish everything and set it up beautifully and make sure that everything is as good as it possibly can ever be. And um, even if you look on my Facebook today, I've just put a couple of posts of some, you know, two Eastman guitars, which are absolutely impeccable brand. A um, couple of little things there that make those be stock and um, 
it's not because they it's not because either of the guitars are failed as such it's just that our level of quality control I know that I want to give my customers a certain level of quality and these are one's a 500 pound guitar and the other one is a 900 pound guitar um, so every guitar so to, 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 to sum up to suggest that in response to one or two comments I saw a 300 pound guitar should be perfect you might think it should be but they rarely ever are it's up to someone like me to make sure that the imperfections are in line with the quality that you'd expect and to make sure that they're not going to spoil the enjoyment, the, the love that somebody will have of the guitar. And also, if I get it slightly wrong, I can always speak to the customer and go, right, okay, now I know what you want. So um, in this particular customer's case, as I say, I absolutely love the guitar, absolutely gorgeous guitar, and, um, but it wasn't quite right for the customer. So we, I'd have just swapped it around, obviously being aware of the details that he wasn't happy with, being mindful of the fact that the next guitar is going to have something, something that potentially, you know, you it's a minefield trying to get some people perceptions and which is why I do these videos because I just want to make sure, I want to make sure that everybody is aware that guitars are guitars, they're meant to be enjoyed, they're meant to be loved and played and you're meant to have hours and hours and years of pleasure from them. Uh, but aren't necessarily you know, if you start scrutinising to the nth degree, you might find things. Okay, I've waffled on way more than I needed to. I'm sorry about that. Um, but hopefully that just helps respond to last night's, well, night video I did a few nights ago about the uh, V6 coming back from the customer. Okay. Oh, bye.